Wow, is this a live invite? <laughs> Yo, oh, you you wow. manifested it earlier in the episode, dog. This is like being proposed to on a jumbotron at a <laughs> basketball game. I do. What up, everybody? How's it going? Matt Sweets here with my good buddy Jake Weens, and you are listening to the Dama Dads podcast. Welcome. Yes, yeah, super excited. Another Dama Dads, another hour long show of Kendama dad life and just general OG Kendama shenanigans. Dude, it's been so nice. Uh, we've been posting a little more about it on social media and yeah. people have been responding with a lot of cool stuff, like how relatable it is and how much they feel those same things as Dama parents and stuff. It's really, it's been really cool seeing that stuff. Absolutely. No, it, it, I've had a lot of fun. Uh, shout out to Cody Booth for cutting up all the, all the shorts. Like, yeah, I really enjoy posting it up. Uh, I get to share it with my dad, which was which is really fun. Oh, cool! My dad just went and binged the Dama Dads. So no way! That's pretty cool. That's epic. Yeah, I'm stoked to be. <clears throat> I'm glad that we're just still doing it. I was talking with, talk, I was talking to Amanda about it, and I was like, you know what? Even if we just like, at the very base level, like I just get to like nerd out with Matt about Dad and Dama like every day, and everyone just gets to watch. <laughs> you know? Yeah. So. Well, I think, yeah, it's mutually beneficial, I think, because yeah. it is, like you said, our lives are so chaotic to take that one hour and just know that it's dedicated to just kicking it and talking Dom mm -hmm. and not doing anything other than just being present, I think is super, Absolutely. is super crucial. And I'm, Sweet, I'm stoked. Man. And Sweet. a lot of people are stoked too, man. The people be tuning in, hanging out, uh, subbing up man thank you guys all so much as always level five hype train gives a free kendama giveaway you know and maybe i could even convince jake to send an old grain theory around for the dama dads if we get to a level five today you know i might have a few of them around here Ooh, okay nice all right well there's your incentive chat you heard it from the man himself yes yes, yes. man uh yeah stoked to be back another dama dads um i have crazy dad news Okay, um, lay it on us. With with my dad, I want to give a shout out to my dad and my brother. Um, my dad has actually had a form of cancer for a very long time that is in your bone marrow that affects your blood cells. Whoa. So it, it affects your oxygen level in your, in your blood cells. All right. <clears throat> and uh, he's had it for a long time. He can still do all his stuff, but there was a moment where these numbers started to drop and they needed to do what's called a bone marrow transplant i've heard of that dude so intense like it sounds like it's so it, it, it is intense mm -hmm. but you're in your mind you're like how does that even work well they have to find a donor first and it ends up the closest match for a donor was my brother eric queens Dang. so uh for the past few weeks it's been in and out of hospitals with juicing both of uh these guys up to do this transplant and what they did was they took blood from my brother and separated the stem cells and the uh, DNA basically from it. And that DNA then gets put into my dad. And then it basically replaces my dad's DNA. So what? It's absolutely wild. I still haven't wrapped my whole head around it. But just yesterday, uh, my dad had his second birthday where his he was uh, transplanted with my brother's stem cells and DNA that's now going to work its way through my dad's body, go to his bone marrow, replace and basically replace all of his blood with uh, blood that is healthier and has the right amount of counts of cells and that can give him the right uh, amount of both um, <clears throat> immunity as well as oxygen levels. So, wow, bro. That I mean, that's super intense. That's super dope that there's like that solution in medicine. That is so extreme. Like, so it, is it going to eradicate the cancer then? Like it's going that's to That's the goal. That, that's yeah. the goal. Is okay. it, it replaces those cells and so it it, it get fully gets rid of it. Um the craziest part though is that from this point on like like uh just medic I guess not medically is the right word. But if you had no idea who my dad was and you just took a sample of his blood and ran it through a database, it would come back as Eric Weens. Dang. My dad's DNA, like his original DNA is now gone and he is now on ones and zeros in your body, Eric Weens, which is crazy. So your brother's now your dad. 
Yeah. <laughs> oh. Yeah. So it's a, it's a crazy thing. And what's wild is like if they someone, someone said like, yeah, if they found like a female donor and they took blood samples from my dad, my dad's whole DNA would come back as a female. Wow. So, and that yeah. doesn't affect him in, in no. any other way. Like his body would function normal. He doesn't he's not immune or he's not like going to get sick easier or it's not going to affect other organs be that... better with it. So yeah, and wow. he has my brother's DNA now. So he's going to get a lot better at Kandama. He's going uh, <laughs> to have the sudden urge to like just make Kandamas on a CNC. So like, uh, no, Dude, but that's no, really was, congratulations. Yeah, you know, was, that's a huge deal, deal, man. And it was, it's a, it's a huge deal that it was my brother um, donating those, those stem cells, which was, incredible it was just it was a pretty emotional day yesterday seeing it we just facetimed and the all the nurses were there so wow um, yeah shout out to my dad for he's incredible with strength with that and my brother for being an incredible donor dude and shout out to science for yes. figuring that shit out because that is intense man holy yeah. i mean and they even said they don't know why those stem cells just go straight to the bone marrow but they said you infuse the this stem cell stuff with my dad and the stem cells are like oh yeah we know where to go wow that's so sick bro that's so sick how old is your dad if i'm asked uh 72 i think oh okay i think sure his birthday's he has a birthday november 18th so i'll find out then i guess yeah (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> right, dude. I found out my dad was fifty nine this year, so now I know that because next year's sixty, so I gotta remember to do something. Sixty. Yeah. Yeah, man. No, it's it's a, uh, it's good to. It's good relief off your mind, right? I mean, you've been you've been probably thinking about that a lot since you found out he had that stuff, right? So this absolutely. is finally like, a little bit of closure for the time being, you know. Oh, absolutely. He has a hundred days ahead of him of like uh, going to the hospital every day to get checked. Which mm-hmm. is crazy. Yeah. And uh, if you guys don't know, my dad is an avid wood turner. He's an artist um, with turning wood. Yeah. Very talented. Amazing. And uh, the nurses said, you can't get into your shop and turn for a for hundred days. And my dad was just like, oh, oh, no. <laughs> What's he going to do with himself, bro? <laughs> no, but it, it, it it's funny how, like, it's just a. Uh, I don't know. Yesterday was kind of this interesting emotional moment where like I have kind of emotionally blocked out like every kind of scenario. It's just been like, oh, yeah, we're just going to do this thing. And then yesterday, like actually sitting there and like seeing my dad and seeing my brother and realizing how incredible this whole situation was. It's like it like finally hit me then, you know, it was overwhelming. My brother who just like had gave blood and they separate stem cells from it and then they put it in my dad and they become like, yeah, it's yeah. It's, it's beautiful. It's amazing, man. I'm glad. That's a that's a good that's a good way to start the weekend, bro. That's yeah. really nice. I'm glad for Papa Weens. I'm glad we'll get to see more amazing things from him in the future. Yeah. I mean, dude, speaking of, we always talk about Dama history on this channel. I mean, Pa is legendary in my mind because before there were hand Yeah, bro. That was that's another thing of you being extra sick at your dama tables from the very beginning you don't just put your tamas on a table you take a real piece of wood and you router out a ball holder like that is so sick this one's from 2013 yeah that was you had those at dama fest didn't you yeah tiger maple but i want to touch on pa because i think there's a lot of people who don't even know what i'm saying when i say those words out loud but um for those of you who don't know when kendama just started like before anyone was hand turning their own things even jake got his dad to make some kendamas and he didn't just make like normal kendamas they were like they some one of them had a spike in the small cup i believe yeah uh, it dude it was like <laughs> just classic you knowing you now that like of course you didn't just make a normal kendama on your first rip you just had to do something extra to be like this is my kendama this is what we're gonna do like i thought that was really cool well my dad like he again he just loves to work in the wood shop and uh so and i'm not as hands-on like i don't have that like hands-on craftsmanship level that my dad does yeah so but i have lots of ideas so <laughs> yeah, yeah. every time we get into the wood shop, it would just be like, yo, let's just hang out and think of some stuff to make. That's where like Paul coffee scoops and a bunch of stuff was like made. But I was like, man, let's just turn like the most beautiful Kendama ball that we can 
And uh, one of the classics of, of a pause, like, again, let's do something different. So I'm not sure if you guys can see it here, but the grains on the diagonal. So this is tiger maple. So the grains kind of all over the place. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, it's like we just turn the grain on a diagonal to where when it sits in the ball. The grain lines go, go kind of at a diagonal just so you can look at it, a natty ball and say that's a paw. And you um, told me that a long time ago, too, that your dad loves doing things on diagonal because yeah. it's like you, you'll you know it's him who did it because of that signature. Yeah, so there was this. And then with the kandamas, which is like, let's make it. I've got access to my dad here so he can just pretty much make anything. So let's make a kandama, but with only spikes. Like, mate, no, there was a base cup. I but, think there was a base cup, yeah. Yeah, there was a base cup, and uh, so we did that, and that was fun. But no, it's just been it's a it's just a lot of fun to get into the a wood shop and say like, yo, let's make this, let's make that, and then be able to do that with your dad and like continue to have those moments of like collaborating, working together. I don't know, it's it's an amazing thing, and the, the wood shop is a very special place. So yeah, dude. I mean, you've made videos about it. Like mm -hmm. I've seen many photos, and so I feel like. I know what it's like to be in there, even though I've never stepped foot in it. But well, dude, uh, maybe uh, if you make your way to uh, Nashville for Battle of the Border, my parents live in Hendersonville, so maybe we can have a little Paul uh, Wood Shop session. Oh, actually, no, we won't be able to do that this year. Oh, next because it's not a hundred days away. Yep, good call. Oh man, but yeah, uh, last last Dama um, or Battle of the Border. We had an incredible session in the wood shop. I had Rod, I had um, Adrian, Ben, I had um, Sour Mash. Like everyone just came and hung out around a fire and we talked about wood stuff and smoked cigars and drank whiskey. And See, and I think that's probably the memories that I have from your instas and stuff that I was like, oh, I know that place yeah. for sure. And isn't it like that where you guys go there on Thanksgiving and stuff too and you guys hang out there? Definitely. Yeah, that's it's the it's the house, so. Yeah, man. So 2024 exclusive Paul visit. Did. Wait. Yeah, 100%. And I uh, I am going to Battle at the Border. Yesterday, we actually confirmed we will be live streaming. What? Yeah, Chad Chad decided to bring us out and, and, and bring, this, bring it with us because Battle at the Border has become one of the bigger competitions in the United yes. States. And so, but still in Kendama, there's a lot of people who can't travel and who can't attend. And I know that the Nako uh, Twitch stream is something that people really love. Like even our friends in Japan, like MJ, who can't come, they love tuning in, seeing what's happening, especially for the finals. So yep. uh, me and Cody, along with probably 10 other Sweets players, will be traveling to Battle at the Border this year and, and live streaming the whole thing. You guys always roll so deep. Then when the Sweets... It's literally like sweets is like watching the classic like movie scene where there's like or just a row of people shoulder to shoulder like t like twenty deep slow mo walking just down the street <laughs> taking up the whole thing. That's that's the sweets crew every time. Dude, my the sweets players love to compete. You know, like for a long time we added players who just loved playing for like open wins and stuff, and that's who they drew those people into the squad mm -hmm. in the early days. So even if you don't see people post and and be part of the the online community a lot uh they still come to the events because they love that's what drives them in kendama mm -hmm. it's not posting or, or filming bangers it's competing and that's i think that's cool i've been talking about that a lot in-house lately because we're trying really hard to help organize kendama in some way shape or form to help give us some like way to value competing you know because right now it's kind of just like there's this event that event and this is who wins and there's no real path to how you get to be there. If you just started tomorrow, there's how do I get good? Where do I do comps? How do I do this? Like there's not really a lot of like leading people to that. And we're trying to like help figure out the the coolest way and the best way to give people that like goal because I love competing in Kendama. It's why I started getting into it because I wanted to. It's why I flew to San Francisco after I'd been playing for a year because I wanted to be in a competition and you were the only one throwing them. And so, but I think everyone's driven differently. Um, but like for the competition driven people, there isn't a lot for them. And so I've been thinking a lot, especially with Gabe. Gabe's been thinking about a lot to how do we unite all of us who love that and give ourselves a chance to compete and to like rank up. And I think that's something cool and condemned to think about. Absolutely. Um, see, I'm the opposite of you. I'm yeah. competing. Uh, that's why I throw events, which is kind of the, the beautiful moment of like you coming out to SF in those early days was like, 
I don't compete. I just, I've never liked it. I like freestyle, but I don't like open. I just, yeah, I'm the opposite, dude. I've never competed in freestyle. I I hate it with my life, but I love open. And that's why you're a judge. And that's <laughs> yeah. why you're a judge. See? Yeah, we, exactly. We put it in every way. Like, I don't like to compete, so I host Kadama competitions. Like, yeah. you, but I compete in freestyle. And so when I'm competing in freestyle, like, you're the one judging it because you don't want to compete. Yeah, so and I like cool. judging. So, it's, yeah, we well, all find our spots. I hate judging. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God, it's so good. But no, so with Sakura Classic, like you're hitting on, on something like really good there is um, as far as like the traveling out, like you're talking about with the live streaming mm -hmm. and like with Sakura Classic, the original idea, well, the idea kind of evolved into the into this concept of um, having one contest that is like a package that you build and then it just gets syndicated throughout the country. So like we've got West Coast, Oakland, so West Coast can all go to that one. We've got the Midwest, which is Chicago, and then we've got uh the uh, sakura south which is in nashville i just got to get an east coast now and if anybody else wants to apply to host the sakura classic like i super welcome it because the goal again is like getting that contest as accessible to all the people that want to compete as possible um and uh yeah even getting it overseas like tokyo was a was one that we had for 2020 before that pooped out Copenhagen and a few other spots. So, well, so is this year? Is this the year to bring it back? Are you going to try to go hard this year, or are you going to just? I'm going to try and go a little bit harder this year. I'm going to add like one more spot. I'm going to try and add a um, a foreign spot, like a, a different country. Yeah, and then see what I can do from there. But definitely, um, uh, definitely Chicago. I can 100% speak on Chicago. Um, I will be there this year. <laughs> yes, please. Yeah. Oakland and uh, SF. That's kind of in shifting right now. And Dude. then I'm pretty sure Chad will be hosting the one in in uh, Nashville. But yeah, it's, it's the idea of just getting making it more accessible to those people that do want to compete because that is such a viable genre. Oh, Kendama. Well, dude, I see I see a lot of exclamation points in the chat, and Jay Boogs is saying NYC. An NYC Sakura would be epic, bro. I know. I, I need an East Coast representative, and I, I, I need to find the crew that's going to like bust it out. Right, so J I J bet Bush. Austin could help. Austin oh, Donovan, hundred percent. Um, Austin's also a Sakura champion, so he's dang. Got a champion. That's actually true. Um, but yo, J Bugs, hit me up, man. Let's talk. Um, also, thanks to the Pokemon Go gifts. Always on top of it, J Bugs. Yeah, <laughs> always one hundred percent. So yeah, speaking of competitions, Catch and Flow is the last one coming up. Getting more stoked on that, and then it's just right into Battle at the Border. So. Yeah, yeah, that's what we're starting to plan now is is battle at the border, and it should be good. And and I talked to Chad about it, and they had a pretty good turnout this year, considering they had masks and all that stuff and yes. the testing. And so he's like, I'm not sure what to expect, but I'm expecting more for sure. So yeah. we might be at capacity at Old Rocket Club for for the Dude. first time ever if if people show up H tough. Yeah, I mean it was it was. Battle of the Border was the first contest out of COVID. Yep. Where it was like, let's go. And I've never felt an energy in a room like that before, where everyone was just so insanely stoked. Um, both because it was either their first live event ever or it was their first one in a long time. Yeah. And that energy kind of just continued out through all of 22. And so I'm really excited for 2023 to see kind of how it happens and what moves on. So. Yeah, a hundred percent. No, I still want to talk to him about MCing. I got to try and keep that going. Hey, you know, it, it, it's never a big question if you want Jake Ween's to MC our event, okay? <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. <laughs> yeah. Cool, man. Well, hey, how about uh, Halloween kid stuff coming up, man? It's uh, do we got? Do, I know we hadn't talked about costumes full. Do we got costumes picked out? Do we got trunk oh, or dude. treating or any cool things you're up to this weekend? What's good? Yeah, with that? Uh, we're doing. Uh, so Isla's gonna be a lion. It's pretty awesome. Cool. Owen's gonna Owen's gonna be a like a hot rod mechanic. <laughs> like a badass hot rod mechanic. <laughs> and he's just all about trucks and cars. That's all he cares about. He walks behind the wheel, truck, car. Like whoa, he's so stoked. So nice. uh, we got him like a little like onesie kind of like like mechanic vest, mm -hmm. and then one of those shirts with like the like tattoo sleeves. No like, tattoo way. Sleeves. Yeah, and then we're gonna get him a little wrench and a little hat. So, yeah, he's gonna be a, he's he's definitely gonna be all about it. 
Um, I don't know what I'm going to be, yeah. but I do know that I'm blowing it out in my front yard. I'm doing under light projections on our tree and I'm going to have my sampler and my mixer out doing like spooky DJ set. What? Oh yeah. Like on Monday when people are coming to get yeah. candy, it's going to be like DJ Jake Weens, here's your candy. <laughs> yeah, no, totally. I'm doing like this, like spooky, like kind of like dark techno set. But uh, we have this giant tree that kind of like covers our whole front yard. It's a beautiful canopy. So I'm getting my my uh, my studio lights lighting it, but I'm also going to get my projector and project imagery up into the tree. Cool. So you kind of like come into this whole little space. Nice, bro. That sounds legit. Nice. How about you guys? Yeah, I got um, Emma Jean is going to be, what do I, I always forget the name, Alien Addison. From Zombies okay. 3, yeah. very specific. But she's going to have, like, she's going to be an alien, essentially. She's going to have blue hair and all this cool makeup. And so she's jacked. Because awesome. she, we haven't fully dressed her up yet. She's just worn, like, the stuff. Mm -hmm. So she's really excited to go blue hair and, and do the that, whole thing. That's super cool. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, little little baby's going to be uh, Snow White for no okay. other reason than she just looks really, really cute in it. <laughs> And then, yeah, I don't know. Uh, I'm going to be Mario, um, of course. but we got to still piece some things together. Alex is going to piece some things together. I don't know what she's thinking, but she always comes up with something last minute and is always good and spooky. So, um, yeah. But, yeah, we have uh, – she's got all kinds of school stuff this week, but then this weekend we're – oh, I'm going – me and Alex, we got a babysitter Saturday. I got, I'm going to Wobble Ween. It's uh, like an EDM Halloween extravaganza. And Boogie T's in town, and I never have seen Boogie live for as long as we've worked with him. So um, Dude, we're epic. going, we're gonna go kick it with Boogie and w listen to some music and have a cool night without kids. So that's gonna be fun. Oh, dude, haven't had that in a long time. So Same. yeah, Same. Uh, yeah. So I'm gonna have to figure that out too. Dude, gotta get a night. Gotta get a night away every now and again because. Mm -hmm. That's the thing that's tough, man. You worry about your kids so much, you forget about the relationship that brought the kids. You know, you got to yeah, focus on that a lot too. And it's hard. It's like one of the hardest parts, I'd say. Because you just like get into these routines of taking care of kids, feeding, going to work, going well, you're to You're immediately docked into like third, especially if you have like two kids. Like mm -hmm. you're like fourth in line. <laughs> yeah. Your family of four, you are fourth in line. A hundred percent. No matter what. So, so it's like, and then, uh, but yeah, it's, it's definitely something. And every time you go, you're like, oh, this is amazing. Do you remember the first time that you went out? The first time someone stayed with your kids and and you and Alex kind of like left and went just to get away from the kid or the, like your first for a second? So I, I don't remember the first only because my we did it kind of early and my parents have been really on it and helpful with that kind of stuff from the very jump. So like we've been we've been uh lucky to have them feel comfortable sleeping over at Grammy and Grandpa's house from a mm -hmm. very early time. So I yeah. don't I don't remember it as much as the first <laughs> what I do remember was my last night going out before Emma was born. Like that was the thing I remember most cuz we had a planned delivery. So we okay. went out the Friday night before she was going to be born and I remember mm -hmm. clear as day at this comedy show being like well, this is the last Friday we get to go out without kids, like, or before yeah. we need a babysitter, and and I remember that clear as day because that's literally what it's been. It's like it, your life is your kids, and unless you got a babysitter who you trust a lot, because that's not easy to do, I would say. Yeah, absolutely. I remember the so the the, the reason why I asked it because it's like this funny moment that happens. Like, uh, I remember the first time like Isla was just born, and my parents came in to like help out, and. Uh, my, my mom's just like, you know what? You and I just go do anything. And we're like, okay, we're going to leave for one hour. And uh, we like walk. And this one, we lived in Chicago. So we were able to just like walk down the street to like this little bar and like just get a drink and like hang out. And it's funny because you're like, all right, yeah, we're just going to take a break from this whole thing. And you sit down and the first thing you do is pull out your phone and just start sh looking at pictures of your kids and just talking about your kids. And then you realize an hour is not even a real measurement of time. It's just like... <laughs> like this and you're like i guess we gotta walk back home now like i here we go and you just go back but it's like that just becomes your world at that point so like even if you leave to go like 
get away from it, you're still just like, that's all you're thinking about. And you're just like, oh my God, look at her here. Like, oh my God, look at the feet. And that's like, so I remember that being the first time specifically. Yeah. And uh, and it still kind of can be like that too. It's like, you're like, we're going to get away from it. You're trying to go out, you're going to be adults. And you're like adults for like 20 minutes. Then you're like, oh my God. So like school, we got to get her this. And like, okay, now we got to like, Oh my God! Did, did I show you the pictures from the leaves? Like, yeah, I was just gonna say you you start annoying your friends. You're hanging out with pictures of your kids. Like, oh, you haven't seen them forever. Look how big they've gotten. Did you like? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's so, it's like so cliche, but it is really true because no different than kendama. It's your world. So like, it's just what oh, you're most invested in. And absolutely. But I think my friends, like a lot of my friends don't have kids like that are my age. Like most of them don't, I would say. Um, and I think all of them get a lot of pleasure in hearing it because they have chosen not to have kids. So they're like, ah, yes, well, I'm going to go out tonight and stay out till 10, I think. And then I'm going to go wake up tomorrow. I'm going to go play disc golf most of the day, I think. I don't know. Maybe I'll go get a burger and a beer with some friends. It's like, yeah, OK, dog. Or when someone's like, they don't have kids and, and they're like, yeah, man, I just don't have time. And you're like, oh, God, you have you have so much time. Oh, oh just tell me again <laughs> that you don't have time. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, jeez, dude. Yeah. But uh, uh, what was I was going to say, um, yeah, just that that time concept of like when you realize like an hour was nothing and then people are like okay where do we have time and then you realize that time is relevant to your energy level like you could have four hours of a chunk of free time at the end of the evening but if you're so freaking exhausted from your kids and work that it's just like i'm not gonna just gonna sit around and do nothing i'm not gonna do anything really so yeah well that's a, that's a, and we've talked about that before because i try to motivate myself to come down here and work <laughs> A yeah. AKA stream for four more hours at the end of the night. And a lot of the times it's chill, but a lot of times recently, I don't know what it is, whether it's winter coming or something. I'm just like extra, just like, uh, I just want to like watch Netflix and not do anything and not talk yeah. to someone, you know, which is. You know. Oh, speaking of winter coming, November is upon us. What are your thoughts on Natty November this year? I mean, I am always a non taking it. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Natty November. I mean, I don't know. I play with Natty Kendamas every now and then to remind right. me of where we came from because mm -hmm. it used to be an epic thing. Like even with Grain Theory's raw ash being super sticky, it's it's still not paint no, that right. exists today. So it's like you go back in skill level like three grades, I think, when you start nattying again because mm -hmm. it takes a while to get those – the sweat built in and stuff, but by day 15, that Dama is going to be one of the most honed Damas you have, oh, cool. I think, right? Yes. Uh, I always tell people it's like a baseball mitt. It's like a That's mitt. That's like, reference. It's all fresh and it just breaks in and like, and uh, you learn how it plays and it adapts to the way you play. So a good, a good beat in Natty, like super proper is like rivals any paint that you can find. But it just takes that like so much TLC and grime. I mean, like forehead grime. <laughs> that the, the, the little pit area right here where that sweat builds up. You got to get that in there. Oh, like, oh God. Oh, now, man. When's the last natty you actually broke in? Uh, we, well, we did the uh, Mocha series just recently. And I've been playing the TO mod a lot. And I've been breaking that in quite a bit. But the one that was like so freaking honed it was actually from fallen 50 and it was a it was a birch teal mod that i did a lunar backflip combo on Dang. and it's not and like i specifically wanted to use a natty because it was just like it was so bird dude birch just like is a yeah. sponge for grime stalls yeah. are the best with a broken in natty 100 percent. and i'll remind people there's one pro in the or i mean i'd say there's one winner of kwc who used a natty kendama to win do you know who it is uh, was Quick K Dub C trivia. Oh my god, why well, don't know this? Okay, it wasn't Bonds. It wasn't Wyatt. Wyatt used a TK sixteen. Mm. Did he? That was the TK Ken he had. TK sixteen Ken with a Turner Thorn Green Tama zero tracking. Oh, so, that's like actually him. insane. Next after that was Bryson, right? Yeah. And then can't so. Was it so? 
No, it what? actually was Bonds. 2014, he used a Natty Stripe Zen, I believe. Oh, okay, yeah, Natty Stripe Zen, okay. Mm -hmm. But I yeah. always told people it was, and I only know that because it was always been my argument that people complain about paint not being sticky or that we should regulate the paint in Kendama competitions. And I was like, you don't need it to win. Like, that's not, no, that is not an advantage to some extent if your Natty is broken in. It doesn't matter if you're Thomas Sticky if you have the skills to play the right way, you know? And mm -hmm. I've gotten that point with the size of a Kendama too, because I don't think it makes it any easier the bigger it gets at this point. I don't think someone's going to beat any of the top 10 players in the world because they have X Kendama. I just like, mm -hmm. am not convinced of that. I think skill overrides all of that stuff in the end. Of course. And with Kendama design, I mean, it's all about balance. So it's like, the if you made a for instance like the big thing is like magnets like don't put magnets in a kendama well it's like what's a magnet really going to help you with like a no. big cup <laughs> yeah. and a winner maybe but it's like other than that like what no nothing is going to help you or if it's like you go up there with a like with the, let's say you go up there with a kaiju you know it's like yeah like you'll be able to do like certain tricks really easy but then when it comes down to like late flips and crazy stuff it's like you're going to lose that agility. So it's like you have your like pie graph and there's only a certain amount of stuff you can do. So where you add tons of agility, you might lose certain things. So if you made a Kendama super small, it's going to flip really fast, but it's going to be less stable in certain tricks. So same with the string too, right? Like string oh at, at a certain point, the string gets so long that you can't do a spacewalk. You can't one turn something because if you bend yep. your knees, it touches the ground. So I think yep. again, when a lot of people who see kendama competition ask why we don't regulate stuff and my answer is just this it's like at some point whatever advantage you think you have is gone on the next trick so it really is impossible to like set yourself up to use this kendama that's going to beat someone who is better than you i guess because that's what cheating's for right in the end of the day is to you know you want to make yourself on someone else's level with by altering your equipment and i i just do not believe that that is going to let you beat uh, Liam or Nick or Zach in the end of the day. I think you have to just be honed or else you're not going to win anyways. Absolutely. And if your excuse for losing is they played a better Kendama, it's like, <laughs> if your excuse for losing is like, oh, but their Kendama was so much better than mine. It's like, well, it's a competition. That Kendama is available <laughs> for $50 on the internet. Go buy it. Like, yeah, if you think that's the reason. Or it's like just you do. I mean, most of the people that are go going up there and competing are like are like professional kendama players or like high level sponsored players that have access to kendama brands. It's like, yo, if your goal is to go there and win KWC, like talk to your brand, like figure out that dominant's gonna get you there, you know. And so, I and I think that's how we've gotten to where we are today with kendamas, yeah. obviously, right? Because they're just they're all very similar to the to, to an extent now because there's. Because getting bigger is just uh, not the move, I think. I don't know. That's just, you know, I've seen some slightly bigger ones. And at some point, it just doesn't feel the same. If it's too heavy to me, it's not, it doesn't have the agility. Like you were saying, it's all, oh, yeah. it's all your, what you want in a Kendama. It's but stats. it's not going to. like stats on, on it. So, but um, yeah, I'm a fan of just deregulating everything. Um, uh, actually, on the new Ben Harold, because first of all, Ben Harold does not care about like his Kendama fitting in a box, right? Ben Harold's out there. So like on, I wish I had one of his bags. Um, the bag that I did, that I designed for him, um, it says like, play this Kendama with no boundaries or limits. There is no box. It says it like on the bag. Nice. Cause ben, Ben's mod barely fits in the box. Like, yeah, you got to smash it in. Because his Serato is is so wide, but it, it's funny because when you talk about like a big Kendama, you always think about like height, right? Like this was like it's sixteen point five centimeters. It's still half a centimeter underneath the regulated length or height, which is seventeen. But the but the width of the Serato that added that weight up there is what got regulated. And like you can see, us just like it like squeezes in there. And uh, so, what, dude, and that's half the reason I have the stance I do because at 2018 NACO, I think it was, it was the year there was a lot of questioning, I think, mm -hmm. about if I was going to let something go through. And I was watching people smash their mods into the box. And I was like, yo, 
this millimeter is not going to decide who wins the game today, so we're going to let it through because I I like what the box stands for, but I don't believe in its rigidness at this mm-hmm. point in our in our competition world. But no different than I don't think you know we're ready for J.K. Seals to be approved or whatever it may be, so that you can only compete with this because that's the road we're going down. You know, you can't half it. You have to be like. Yeah we're going to regulate every part of everything and this is what you compete with or we have to be just like do whatever you want as long as it's not excessive right like a sumo or a kaiju or whatever it may be it should it should be less of regulation and more of requirements like it needs to come down to like the core essentials of a kendama does it contain all of the elements are there three cups there are three cups check is there a spike check is there a ball with a hole in it connected by a string? Check. Anything within that realm is is doable. Mm-hmm. Um, and because because that confirms that this is a kendama. You know, it's like you go up there with like I don't know whatever else. It just confirms that you're playing kendama because the sports kendama. You know. Yeah. Um, no, so I feel I it. That's that is a. Yeah, this is our first year without the box and. It, there was no problems, you know. Uh, the I only still the Dama sticker check. Dang, we did the Dama. Sh- we, we I still did Dama checks, like and, and gave yeah. stickers because I I love that part. I have my Damas that have the stickers on them right mm-hmm. back there because me they mean more to me because of that sticker. And I wanted people to still leave Nako with that feeling of this mm-hmm. is the Dama I use to compete. And I think there's something to still having to show someone what you're going to compete with, right? Like it wasn't just bring whatever. It was. Edwin, who is a very high level com- player, checking everyone's Dama as they came in, mm-hmm. making sure it's nothing weird about it, right? So, yeah. Um, yeah, I like it. I think it's good for for competing still to have that kind of stuff. Because, yeah. but again, yeah, I like the no boundariesness of it. But I think we'll debate that until you forever. Know, forever, until it changes or doesn't. You know, I've always wanted to kind of take it to the extreme level and do. Uh, and like, if anybody wants to help me out with this concept, I really want to do it. Uh, it's a like a TK open. So it costs $25 to enter. That $25 just buys you a fresh TK 16 in a package. You come to the event. Here's a, you get to reach in and grab a TK 16. That is your Kandama. There is a two hour hone in session where you can learn how this Kandama works. And then you compete with that Kandama all the way through. Cause let's just say if your if your goal with regulations is to level the playing field, like you gotta level the freaking playing field. Do everyone plays the same kendama? It's a JKA TK16. You can't restring it. You can't. You I mean you can sit there and like get all your grime in it and whatever. You can glue the tip, but like that would be so fun because it would truly level the playing field and 100% come down to skill. Yeah. Um, Do you remember the first two Nakos or first two MKOs? That's hazily. So I literally did that to the finalists at NACO. The first. Oh, you the, did. You did it with Uzis, right? Yeah, dude. Every oh, yeah. every competitor got a fresh Uzi, and I gave them five oh. minutes to hone in their dama, and it was fine the I first year. But the second year, Sam Cannon opens this thing up and just starts smashing the Mall of America stage. And so everyone else is looking at him like, oh, I should probably do that. So for five minutes, I have have people just bashing these things on the ground. And everyone up in the balcony is going, what is happening? Like, what is the competition we're watching right now? And it was because... Like they were worried they couldn't because the tricks had leveled up to a place where it was going to be hard to do it with a slick Ozura. So they were like, F, like, yeah. And so we stopped doing it because of that reason because yeah. five minutes is not enough time to hone in a kendama. And if you've practiced on a certain kendama and the tricks are hard, I'm really like giving you a really serious handicap. And I didn't want to like affect the players competition experience that much in the very mm-hmm. end of the day and so your idea is cool because it's from the jump you're using this not yeah. after four rounds of whooping people with your favorite dama like i think there's and that's why I, I didn't do it again because i felt bad about that but i like your idea a lot 
Hey, who knows? I probably got the idea from MKO and then forgot about it. And then just was just like, there we go. But no, I, yeah, oh man, I'm having flashbacks of the train station right now. And just like <laughs> being in that place and like going, wow, like such vivid flashbacks right now. That's oh, wild. God, remember Kristen hurt her leg or whatever was having some crazy troubles with like she she yeah. had to go to the doctor and the hospital and all these places because there was like something wrong with her leg. I can't remember. But that's super vivid in my mind because I think Gabe or someone was driving her around probably. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. What a crazy time. Dude. Dude, I, I still have the, the blue towel with the train logo on it. You do? Yeah. I I, I have every single NACO slash MKO piece of memorabilia probably. Did you get your swag bag from this year? I did. Okay, good. It's downstairs hanging out with all the ones. I have like like a turducken, you know, where you just like shove everything inside. It's just like <laughs> one bag with like three previous years shoved into it. Yeah. So, uh, but yeah, I've got, I've got all those. I really enjoy Dude. all those, and especially keeping like that towel, man. Dude, towel. I'm so bad at that stuff. I wish I was better because all the, I saved a lot of the k C towels and stuff and I mm -hmm. hang them up and stuff, but I like, I'm not good at keeping everyone and or buying everyone and bringing them home because sometimes I just like actually use it and then I'm like, you know, forget yeah, about no, it or whatnot. Totally. Dude, look at this monstrosity I have. I got to show you. Just on the fact of like stuffing things in things. Oh, yes. I, saw, I remember this. These are all your holsters. <laughs> yeah, this is all my Kendama holsters just like <laughs> stuck together, bro. This. Oh, here's your favorite one. This is Jake's favorite Kendama holster. This is from Japan. K and T is the brand. It's so oh, dope. Yeah, My favorite one isn't even on here. I have a little baby version of that. Do you? I've got the. Yeah, oh, dude. see, no, that's my favorite one. The one you have is the decade one with the. It, that is my it, favorite Kendama holster in the world. I've got two of these. But this one's still so fresh. It's oh, so bro. Fresh. I can't find mine. I, I can't. that's the Sulab. Dude, look at my Sulab version versus it, yours. Like yours is, so you use bad. yours. I, I yeah. used mine in Japan and that was it. I got so many. And dude, the guy that makes these is actually a blader too. And then I've got my Zawa thing. This is my little baby version of these guys. Dude, I got this one from South Korea from some that's homie. Sick. This is like a gift. That one's pretty cool. This one we all know. This is the original. So another OG moment. Um, Matt Rice, Jake's yes. business partner, is the originator of the first Kendama holster, in my opinion, next to, I mean, Kazuma or whatever, but deal with it. Used to make leather handmade Kendama holsters, and they were the move when you started uh, making That's stuff. So when you That's started Kendama, you wanted one of these. And I bought every one for a really long time. Yeah, I've got this one too. This one's kind of cool. Yeah, now dude. we have so many. We've got the coup straps. Of course, we got sidekicks. They all kind of evolved, you oh, know? To get smaller, right? Like these are yeah. all <laughs> enormous. Now it's like this. Like this is the like this is the holster move. It's like Yeah. Oh dude. Plug it up. Ken Garden, sidekicks. If you don't know, now you know. And it just stays on. Because that was the thing about like with the, for instance, like with these bigger holsters, like they're dope. But dude, like, first of all, this one. Kind of, I'm not wearing. It hangs a little low. It hangs low. It's more, and it's like super statement piece. But um, it I always made me feel like I was unsheathing a sword. Like, well, that was the purpose of it. I'm, yeah, the, it's terrible like framing, but I'll try to lift it up. Yeah, but yeah, it would go here, and the idea <sighs> was like, such a good fit. And like you would just go, click, and if you kept it unwrapped, you could like just go straight into a trick. Dude, I got to find mine now. I'm super salty that I can't, that it's not just hanging on my wall. I don't know. Maybe if we reach a hype train, I'll send this to you. Oh, geez. No, dude, don't even. I'll buy it from it's you, to be my, honest. It sits, my, it sits in my closet, but this is the decade version. <sighs> That's why I'm saying I'll give you straight cash for that. That thing is epic. We'll work out, we'll work out a trade or something. All right. All right. That sounds good to me, man. I've got, yeah. Yeah, I... I have lots of holsters. Dude, They're do I have? Holsters. I I got the Mugen holster. I forgot I got that. Wait, the bondage one? Yeah, no, not the bondage one. I have the bondage one. Oh, oh my gosh, do I have the bondage one? <laughs> Bond, bondage. Yeah, oh, I have a second thing. Do <laughs> another one. Oh my god. <laughs> okay, yeah, so this is one. this There's is Mugen's. 
This yeah, is like one. That one is gorgeous. That that was the original. That one's been around for a very, very long yeah, time. It was like $120 or oh, something brand so new. Beautiful. But it's it is uh this is in mint condition too. This one's never been used. I can't I, I hate it. It's probably Royce is the homie who gave it to me, to be honest. And he'll hate me if I don't remember that. But he gives me so many cool things. Yes. That oh, that one was cool. that's a very serious piece in my collection. This was the Oh no, this wasn't Kazuma, but this was one I got at the last KWC I went to. Uh-huh. Luck out. It but it's the same vibe of of uh you know, bondage style. The <laughs> Kazuma one had the metal ring though, right? That went right I over. I have the it ball. downstairs. It looks like it's a kind of like a ball gag. Like Yeah. Dude, this one was crocheted. Yeah, that one's by wild. Magic Domadude's girl Rose. Oh, hold on, wait. I have another predating. Oh, and look at this. Just a res Ken with a Lou first gen Luzi kicking it in this holster. Oh, dang. I got too many. I got too many holsters, y'all. I had no idea. I've got to, I've got to break out my jar of relics here. Too. Oh, what? What is that? So inside this, I keep a lot of like stuff from my design past. So like, first of all, oh my God. Does that this smell is, delicious. Like, so what we're looking at here is the uh, Uzora package. This contained two of my favorite Uzoras. This was the baby blue and the and the and the pink that were in here. But inside yeah. this is just kind of like a series of things that either people have sent me and just different designs that I've done. So the original Ken Garden holster. This was like one of the like super early holsters. Yeah, Ken Garden lanyard. Yeah, and so I have the different variants of this. Dude, was the illness think... one one of the first ones you did? The illest one was a strap, and they used it for yo-yos. Oh, that's what it was. But, but what I did was I ended up, because theirs wasn't ribboned like this. Mm -hmm. so I took it and I flipped it around, and then uh, this one was the one that held a kendama right. Oh, man, how did we put this? To, I'm like trying to remember it. Yeah, for real, and though. Then, and then this would go, wait. So it went like that, and then you pulled this part over the ball. And then you strapped uh, it tight pop and then it was just like this yeah so that, that was one of the og original holsters but i was making these and sitting selling those but then i did a dave mateo version yeah my card catch low that one is so Favorite sick colors here the back one has the oh the so dope i never but, actually owned that one yeah and i just have like tons of like little stuff in here like dude og i still have a grip of these wow i have those on a lot of my things OG Ken Garden stickers. And then, uh, dude, do, do, do you remember when beads were the hot thing? Like getting random. Yes. Beads? Do you so, have like, like a skull one or anything? Yeah, I got a skull. I've got Mad Joe the customizer. No way. I got a, a poop bead in here. And then I've got a tiny stove bead. Oh my gosh, dude. Mad Joe. Yeah. Remember him? I mean, do I remember Mad Joe? <laughs> yeah, dude. Yes. <laughs> oh, Death Ray Kendamas. Yeah, These were Ray. first gen like resin type mold Kendamas. Mine beat the crap. Yeah, my yeah, I didn't I didn't so play sick. it much. It's just a it's a shelf piece for me, and I'm glad I bought it long ago because I love looking at it and having it. I have the Fugin. He made like fake Mugins once, mm -hmm. and I got one of those in the museum next to like all the real ones. Yeah, all, all of your stuff is so accessible. Mine's like in a crypt downstairs. <laughs> Dude, so I like got stuff. Yeah, I don't know. When I when I got this house, like Alex knew knew I was a basement dweller. So finding a basement that was like something I could decorate out kendama style, it was something she was excited for and me because she doesn't want it over the whole house. So she was mm -hmm. glad that I had a place to like put stuff up but it's like as you can see by the pile i have some work to do on like i have a whole wall right next to me that i have like yeah. one row up top that i've probably never even shown chat like i have one row up here of of damas wow. that are like homegrowns for the most part but i could i can fill this whole thing out with damas still yeah. and just haven't Good. absolutely yeah actually like in in our house uh i didn't want kendamas to be like absolutely everywhere so we have when you walk in, there's just like a stack of like one, two, like five KG displays. And the only kendamas that are out there on that display are of, of my personal design, like stuff that I have designed and, and worked on throughout my kendama career. And then just like in the office, it's just like kendamas freaking everywhere and like 
stuff everywhere. But uh, yeah. And if you walk in the house, it's not just like <laughs> condoms everywhere. So no, always you always got to keep it classy. Yeah, keep it classy. MJ know? says, "Fun fact: Iwata has specially matched beads for all the musos." Oh, of course he does. Why wouldn't he? Right. Yeah. What's the What's like one of your most prized kendamas in your collection? Mm, the one I can grab currently is a gift that uh, I got from Tamatsu. Same. Really? Yeah. No way. Yeah, Tamatsu. Tamatsu flew to America just for my wedding, actually, and so that was a huge oh. honor. But like in Japan, weddings are a huge deal with some very serious like requirements for gift giving to the to the wedding couple. That is like a dollar amount, and so since that's not what we do here, really, he wanted to find a gift that was like equally special as the amount of money he's used to like giving people in Japan. And so he told me he searched for three months to find one of the oldest kendamas ever made. And it's from like 1950 or something like that. <laughs> but it is like the most what? antique Thing. Like, look how small it is. It's it's a true, like, Nitsugechi style kendama. What? And, yeah, he gave me some literature on it, so I don't know the lineage of everything, but it's, like, held together with a staple on top for the string. Yeah. Like, but this is, uh, he wouldn't tell me how much it costs, but he said he tracked it down for three months, and he said he doesn't even have one in his collection. So That it's, is absolutely ballistic. Yeah, and Gabe hates me because I keep it in this box on my yep. shelf where it never moves because I don't know what I would do if it disappeared. And yeah, so no, that, that's... it's the only one I don't bring to the museum at the shop because I know people don't steal stuff, but if for some reason someone snagged it, I just, I don't know what I would do. Like, you should I take would... a really nice picture of it and frame the picture of it and put it in there. That's actually a really good idea. Yeah. Or I... you should get like a little screen and you just put it in your office and have a camera on it. So it's like one of the bird watching <laughs> live, like it's like a live stream. So you can go there, you can just see that kendama in its current time, but it's just in your house. I think that's a good idea too. My baby, just like my baby, I got to keep an eye on it all the time. No, but that, yeah. that kendama is like, it's irreplaceable. So as a collector yeah. and as like a gift, it's something that is above and beyond my expectations by an extraordinary amount. Yeah. So mine is also from Tomotsu and Hajime. And it was whenever they came to visit me in the kin garden in San Francisco. Oh, nice. And they brought me this Gen 1. Let's get the... You again? Yeah, Gen 1 Goldie. Oh. Oh, hmm. my Lanta. And I've played it. Like, this thing has been seshed. And it's been played. But, but it's still yeah. got its shimmer. It's still got that beauty. And oh. I showed it to, I brought it to Japan with me and I showed Kazuma and he was like so excited because th this was the first generation. Do you remember how you can tell again? Was it the seal it's or like, is there something like, about it's it? Just a, it's a little bit of a different color. This one, the new, the, this one's a little bit darker, I think. Yeah. But uh, it was also the box, but yeah. Oh my God. And you can, it's got that Mugen feel. No, that, okay, yeah, you can see the difference. Yeah. It, it well, mine's kind of, beat to, yours is darker. mine's beat to hell too, but yeah, yeah, mine came darker. It was shiny like yours, but it's, it's a different tone of gold for sure. Mine's not Gen 1. Yeah, but man, yeah, this is something that they gave me at the King Garden and it was in a, it's so traditional. It's just like two hands accepted and everything. Oh, and, that's so uh, sick, dude. Yeah, I, then, use, I use this one to compete. I got my JKA competition seal oh, on this one, I too. I remember. Also, it's got I, just random stuff, like I still have the extra string. Of course. And then, like, I have a grip of these. Oh, the, like, I do, OG, too. OG stickers. The original stickers are so cool. But it was just this moment of, like, of, like, of uh, kind of feeling very humbled and very... Uh, appreciate it and it, it, it's it's one of those things that i think back on and it really inspired me and pushed me to keep doing what i was doing whenever like the pretty much the heads of it in japan like come to your home and give you this gift is like 
okay, I'm, it's like being knighted almost. You're like, I can't stop. I have to keep going. I've been like, like the, if these guys think what I'm doing is important enough to give me a gift of this caliber, like, yeah, I can't stop. There's no, there's no turning back now. So like, that's so cool. That's, that's such a huge pinnacle point probably in your Dama life and career. Yeah. That's so epic. I have one more super rare one to show too. Yeah, please. Never actually produced, but uh, I got this guy here. Whoa, what? And it is a wait. I got. I'll, I'll just take it out. Yeah. It's a Paddock Weens mod. Whoa. Dang. Or, or however you'd say it, but again, this this one's also lightly or seshed. I, I got two of them. One I beat into the ground. But yeah, this side hasn't even seen much of the light of day. But were, were they samples or were they yeah, just they gifts? Were just they were just samples, I think. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, I have two of these and we never made them. But, but it looks, the gray of, looks so nice on that wood, though. Per, it is. And, and, and Purple Heart. That's why that's why I made the Purple Heart win series with GT because I just love that gray on these colors. But like, yeah, dude, this dude. one in this freaking box, dog. So. This box is from Kit Corporation in, in Japan, actually. Oh, sure. Dude, Kit yeah. Corporation, you you kicked it with them a bunch, didn't you? So much. Yeah. I wasn't Not able to. Bad. They never sold sweets, but like, uh, I, I got to meet the owner, dude, and he was always a hoot. Yeah. Dude, gift. So, I mean, you just reminded me, like, just for those of you who've never been to Japan, and I mean, maybe our experiences are different because of who we are in the Kendama world, but gift giving in Japan is just a different level. Um, and it's something that I didn't know existed extremely until you go there the first time and like i literally came home with like seven more t-shirts than i went with and stuff yeah. like that because everyone is so generous and so friendly and the gift giving is what really is like that introduction to someone like us that you want to meet and you don't know or you're gonna have that ability to so to have something for them is like very traditional if you are a big fan of theirs so it was it, it was really overwhelming the first couple times but to mm -hmm. like what you said it's so it gives you that feeling like, wow, what I'm doing means a lot to these people. And that's just something that you can't shake at when you keep getting these handmade, cool, unique things that people put lots of time and effort in just because they like what you make or what you've created. Like that's such a crazy feeling. And the Japanese homies are just next level with the gifts. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. And it's good. And then it inspires me because like when I go, when I go there, like I try and bring gifts what I can, whether it just be like coffee, just a simple gesture of appreciation. Yeah. But uh, no, it's it's definitely rad. And the t-shirt thing is real. And then you're like, what am I going to do with all these t-shirts? And then by the halfway through KWC, you're like, thank God I have 10 extra t-shirts. <laughs> yeah, and for I'm real. I'm sweating through all of my t-shirts. So, Dude, I have a bin of 80 Kendama t-shirts that need to be turned into a quilt, like a t-shirt blanket. Mm -hmm. And those are just the ones I don't wear or don't fit into anymore. Mm -hmm. Like... And I haven't, I've had it for years and I haven't made it yet. So I gotta, I gotta commission someone to do that. Cause that would be really cool to have yeah. all my old it's, shirts in like yeah. none of the Ken garden ones though. Those ones stay on my body. You know what I'm saying? So definitely. I want to make another one. I need to make a, the same, same, same design, but different colorway. The Jersey needs to stay alive. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I find that like my wardrobe, I'm just like, what do I have to wear that doesn't have a freaking caliper on it? Like, <laughs> And because it's just like that, just because when, when you design clothing lines every year, it's like you just end up like wearing your own stuff. Yeah. And uh, I had so many jackets, like coaches jackets and like we're always on like the winter line jackets that the other day I was at a bar and uh, there was I was wearing the winter line 2018 or I think. Yeah. 2018 was like the camo jacket with like the caliper on it. And like it was the one that, that we did with with mash. Yeah, where you can sign the back of oh, it. Oh yeah, yeah. You know, I, it's like one of my favorite jackets, and like I'm in the process of designing like another coach's jacket right now. And this guy was just like, "Yo, that jacket is sick!" And he was so pumped on the jacket. And then everyone, okay, disclosure: if you ever want to get something from him for free, just buy me like two or three drinks. And <laughs> once I have two or three drinks to me, I just start giving everything away. <laughs> but I just gave this jacket off my back to this dude, and I'm just like, I'm like, dude. It means a lot to me that you're so stoked on this design that I did with like my homie. So like, just take it. He was like, really? I didn't try it on. He'd look good on it. So I was like, cool. Wow. And dude, then, giving the clothes right off your back. Holy. I don't know. But I did get home and I was like, damn, I shouldn't have given that thing away. Oh. 
that 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 was my favorite because you dropped the bags that drop too didn't you like yeah. the camo bag yeah, yeah that was my mm-hmm. favorite drop that you've done yeah, yeah. That, that, that but i love super... camo stuff too as an accent piece to my wardrobe every now and then so Absolutely. you definitely hit me with that camo camo dude yeah. well hey man i think it's been an hour i think we've been chatting for an hour already just like that that was so easy. <laughs> <laughs> Did we just pull out a couple holsters, talk about a few? I know. <laughs> like it's no big deal. All right. Well, yo, uh, before we go, I do want to like just really quickly like shout out the chat and see if you guys have any like questions for us. I'd like to interact with you guys more because I try and scroll over here and kind of see what you guys are saying every once in a while. But like, yo, like let's do a quick like Q&A before we go because I would love to hear some more from you guys because we've got – quite a few people in there right now where's where we at where's the twitch yeah we got 40 people in here so yo if you guys have any questions for me or matt uh just about parenting and dama what's coming up what's going down like just that now's a good time then i'm gonna get back to work yeah dude i saw someone fact checked me earlier that uh bonds didn't use a natty and it was bryson who actually used a natty so now i am currently like going back no, I mean it's a, it's a, it's natty, it's natty, it's it's a, it was a, gur. It looks like, but the bottom part looks natty. Uh, maybe it wasn't natty, because I didn't know if gur put a clear coat on it. Oh, uh, Stace wants to know if my dad gave me my first set of calipers. Actually, the calipers came from. Uh, my my brother's also a woodworker and uh we were just brainstorming of like logos and i was like talking with my brother and he just like held it up and he goes what about this and i was like that's it that is that is the symbol you know and uh my dad of course has them in his wood shop and now it's something you see in every wood shop but yeah the, the caliper itself came from uh, my brother eric weens just being like yo what about this we're doing the same thing we we're just like video chatting yeah the next thing we're like check this out. That's really cool. And then uh, we commissioned a local designer in SF, John Carr, um, to uh, kind of put together the original, original GT logo, that little the circle here. Yeah. So yeah. And then that's where the calipers came from. Uh, how much time do we get on an average weekly to play Kendama with life stuff going on? Um, it, it, it's all comes down to a get it in where you can fit it in. It's like, and it's also relevant as far as like what playing kendama is uh for me like i literally dilly dally is the best way to put it like same i just i'm moshikame i'll do some lighthouses my normal tricks when i'm playing um and then but i'd say it's it's small little moments like in the morning again still in in the morning when i'm playing when i'm making coffee like i play kendama or uh whenever i'm outside waiting for isla's bus like i play kendama and I play with the kids. Um, Mine's the so, same. Yeah, so I'd say it's maybe like if you combine all the time, I'd say a li- a, around an hour and a half probably of just like combined like few minutes here, a few minutes there. And t- unless I like really go into a sesh, which that'll add probably another hour. But on average, I'd say hour and a half. Yeah, I would say an hour on average is because I do the same, you know, I'll play a little bit here and there between things. But like last night I was at a friend's party and I played by a fire for the better part of an hour, I think just talking to friends. So like I didn't I didn't do anything worth ta- telling you guys about, but I was definitely jamming Dama, you know, mm-hmm. um, Chad. Just, sorry, one more thing. Sometimes it surprises you. So uh, I posted a clip yesterday of like a trick I've never done before. That was a total surprise. Yep. Um, again, I was just outside <laughs> playing in the leaves after I like got home from school and I was like, oh man, this is just, I'm just going to do a chill, just pull up, stump playing fast hands and just like show the kids playing in the leaves. It's got fall vibes. This sounds really cool. And I get to show off the Kandama, the, 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 the cappuccino and just first tee, I just went room, pulled it up and just missed the spike completely and just completely fast hand birded it. What? Have you seen that sweet? No. Yeah. And I'm and like it's stuck, and I'm just like, oh my god! And I got the spike, and I have not been this surprised forever. I just I don't even try that trick. It's not a trick that I've been trying, 
And it just like happened. And I'm just like, what? You can see the excitement and disbelief in my face in that clip. You have to go back and check yeah, that out. I definitely but. have to go watch it, dude. That's a trick I haven't landed, to be honest. I've like actually tried a few times and I cannot figure out the way to get it to not look. I can't get it to look good, let alone get it to stand there. So I'm going to watch yours, take some notes and... Uh, I think I'm going to have to get that trick. I here selfie soon. filmed it, bro. I selfie filmed it. I wasn't no going way. for anything. Oh, and, my uh, God. And, uh, but yeah, it was just a moment of like, Kendama still surprises me. Like, this many years later, like, you can see the like actual stoke, like, real surprise and stoke in my face after the clip. So, yeah. I'm gonna All right. I'm going to check it out. Chad <laughs> asked, Hey, Jake, can you MC freestyle at Battle at the Border? Crying, laughing, smoochy face. Who is this? Chad Covington. In oh, Chad. Oh, wow. Is this a live invite? <laughs> Yo, oh, you you wow. manifested it earlier in the episode, dog. This is like being proposed to on a jumbotron at a <laughs> basketball game. I do. I do. Let let's talk, Chad. Oh, I would love to. Uh, it's it's on my list of major events in the Kendama world, and I love that stage, and I love coming back to Nashville. So. Let's do it. Awesome. And I got to get there so Sweets and I can sit in the same room and maybe do a Dama Dads. Dude, that would be so cool. I think that's the other thing this lends itself to is like if we could do it in person and actually kick it, like that could be fun. And maybe do some things that we couldn't do otherwise. Like if we were in person, like we could do some, I don't know, something goofy. We can but, play again, Ken, and try, dude, you can try and get vengeance upon me. Like, dude, I, I, a few Dama Dads have reached out too, man. I know it's a me and you thing, but there's a few Dama Dads have been like, hey, whenever you guys start join, letting people join the Dama Dads, you let me know because I want to do an episode with you. So I think we're getting some steam, buddy. We're moving right along. And I think that's the thing too we got to talk about soon, maybe off air, is should we put it on an actual podcast thing? Should we actually put it out in audio form for for people to listen to uh, aside from YouTube, you know? Yeah, I am, I'm open for all of these things. Uh, yeah, there's lots of like, should we do like how how much do we want to evolve it and how fast do we want to evolve it, you know? Yeah. Like I'm, I'm already like on different platforms, like looking at et domadats, like et <laughs> that's podcast. Like, no, because it, it's just fun. I mean, yeah. I think that's the thing too and that's what makes podcasts great I think is just you do it out of fun and out of love for it and then it evolves into something bigger and greater and that's what makes it kind of cool because then all these awesome people are along the ride with us and there's lots more Dama dads and just Dama people like I saw everyone's a parent in some way like there's parents of a lot of animals in this chat who relate to us who don't have kids and i think that's the thing we got to get across too you can listen if you're not a dad it's okay uh, if you love dama most of what we talk about is that probably so um this this podcast is for everybody not just for dama dads yeah absolutely it's just it's just it's easy topics for us to talk about you're just listening in on a conversation between weens and sweets that's yeah. just and uh, we have a lot to talk about. And we, we're easy to, we're easy to conversation to have. So anyways, this has been awesome. Dama Dads, this is episode five now? Yeah, this is our fifth one, episode dude. Five. Episode five complete. Uh, thank you guys again for joining Dama Dads. Uh, stick around. We've got more action for you. And uh, yeah, let's keep it going. Keep playing Kendama. Yeah, everyone have a good Halloween. Post a picture of your Halloween costume in the Dama Dads podcast. We want to see what you guys look like. If yes, you guys don't, absolutely. if you're not part of the Discord, go join the Sweets Rage Discord. And we got a Dama Dads hashtag in there where you can interact and ask us questions for next week and stuff. So, All right, Jake, it's been nice having you. Have a good weekend, and we'll talk to you next week. Arigato gozaimasu. Arigato gozaimasu. <laughs> Peace, guys. Later. With the rollout. All right, that was it. Another awesome episode of the Dama Dads podcast. Thank you all very much for tuning in. We really do appreciate it. It's cool to have people like listening in on it. It's something fun me and Jake like doing. So thanks for helping make our dreams come true. 